Up until now, we have seen several methods of separation of substances. Let us now see how much do we really know and how much of it can be applied in practical problems. Ready for a test? We have here a mixture of sand and big sized pebbles. How will this mixture be separated? Needless to say, hand picking. If the size of pebbles is comparatively smaller, then hand picking could be tedious. So perhaps we opt for sieving the mixture. That would help serve the purpose. Same will be our approach if we have sand mixed with sugar grains. Sieving would be the best option. But now comes the difficult task. How would we separate the mixture of sand with fine powder of sugar? A mixture of sand and sugar powder is very difficult to separate. Yes, I said difficult but not impossible. Because if many techniques and multiple steps are employed, then the separation is definitely possible. Let us see what can be done. We know that the mixture cannot be physically separated easily. So we need to take the help of some agent that would take away one component from the mixture. Let me simplify this for you. What if we add water to the mixture? The sugar would dissolve. The sand won't. That would lead to separation of sand and sugar. And we already know how to separate soil and water. So to begin with, we add water to the sand and sugar mixture and stir it well. And how much water should be added? It should be enough to dissolve all the sugar. That brings us to the concept of saturation level. What is saturation level? It is basically the limit to which a solute can be added to a solvent. To understand this, we take a simple example of water and salt dissolved in it. We know that if we keep adding salt to water, then after a point of time, the salt will not get dissolved. Grains of salt will remain undissolved in the solution. This is because the capacity of the water to dissolve salt is now exhausted. This is when we say that the water is saturated. It will no longer be able to dissolve the same solute in it anymore. Only if we increase the amount of water, then the dissolution is possible. So that is what we mean by saturation. So getting back to our mixture, we need to add enough water to it. This will help us dissolve the sugar in the water and make a sugar solution. And how will the mud get separated? Yes, by sedimentation. When we allow this mixture to sit still for a while, then the heavier sand particles settle at the bottom of the container while the sugar solution will form the upper layer. What comes after sedimentation? That's right, it is the process of decantation. We need to collect the sugar solution very carefully in another container. This marks the completion of the first separation step. That means sugar and sand are separated. Was that our only aim? Well, yes. Separation of sand and sugar was our main aim. However, since water was added externally, now we need to separate water from the sugar. How do we do this? You may instantly answer by the process of evaporation. But are you sure evaporation alone will suffice? Evaporation, which is converting liquid water into vapour form, will not help us in separation. This is because water will be lost when converted to steam. So what do we do to collect the water vapour? Can the reverse process of evaporation work? Yes, the condensation process will be the next step that will mark the completion of the separation task. So we can evaporate the water by boiling it for a long time and at the same time hold an ice cold lid or a plate over the boiling water. The vapours will touch the colder lid and get condensed. The tilting of the lid will help us collect the condensed vapours which is water in another container. The evaporation will make sure all the water is vaporised leaving behind sugar in the container. So now we have sand in the first container, sugar in the second container and water in the third. This marks the successful completion of the separation process. This is how multiple methods can be employed for efficiently separating various components of a mixture.